Hello and welcome back to Cartu Geospatial Solutions. So in this video, uh, we are going to do some remote sensing based analysis. So we are going to compute a new variable uh, called the fractional impervious surface. Right? Uh, so this variable is of paramount importance in uh, groundwater potential mapping studies. So first you will see what this variable is all about and then you will see how to calculate it using the ArcMap software. Okay, so let's get started. So fraction impervious surface. Uh, so as the name implies, uh, this variable is a measure of uh, imperviousness of a surface. Uh, so first of all, we need to understand uh, what the term impervious means. Uh, impervious means it is a restriction that is posed by the uh, surface uh, to the percolation of water within it. Uh, so the more the amount of imperviousness, uh, the more will be its restriction. Uh, and uh, vice versa. Uh, so it is an indicator of the permeability of uh, uh, water within it. So uh, it is a measure of impermeability. And the second factor is that uh, this variable is of uh, great use in terms of mapping out the groundwater potential zones. As the permeability of water and, uh, and the storage of groundwater are totally related to each other, uh, this, uh, this variable can provide you some good insights on figuring out the potential zones of groundwater, right? And the uh, next one is, uh, this variable is greatly influenced by the surface features. Uh, uh, so, uh, as, the, uh, as you can see, uh, some of the stable rocks like the uh, volcanic rocks, uh, these rocks uh, must be having a very high impervious factor uh, because of the very less amount of, uh, because of the very less amount of uh, percolation within them. And whereas in the case of uh, fine loamy so uh, soils, uh, you can see a greater amount of uh, permeability. So in that case, uh, the uh, percolation of water is great as compared to uh, some clay soils. So the surface pressure also plays a vital role in uh, determining the perviousness of a material. Right? So we can, uh, we can uh, estimate this variable uh, using another variable. Uh, so for that, uh, first we need to generate the fraction vegetation cover. Uh, so, uh, only by uh, doing that, we can arrive at this final result, right? So, when it comes to the fraction vegetation cover, uh, it is more of a well-defined uh, vegetation index that is used to measure the overall density of uh, greenness in an area. Uh, so, the reason why I say it is defined is that uh, this uh, type of uh, index is uh, devoid of the uh, influences posed by different illumination conditions. Okay, as compared to other uh, cliche indices like NDVA, SAVI, etc. So by using this, uh, we will be computing our final product which is the fraction impervious surface. Uh, so let us see how to calculate the uh, fraction impervious surface now. So we will see how to calculate the fraction impervious surface or cover. Right? So, uh, so for that, uh, the first and foremost requirement is we need to generate the NDVA of our study area. If you don't know how to calculate the NDVA of your study area, uh, I suggest you to have a look at my previous video in which I have discussed it in detail. So please have a look at my previous video in case if you don't know how to create an NDVA uh, and if you don't know what an NDVA means. Okay, so uh, after, uh, after creating an NDVA, uh, first we need to create another variable named uh, NDVA yes. Uh, so, this is the formula for generating the NDVA yes variable. Uh, so, as you can see, it is the NDVA image okay, minus the lowest value of the NDVA image uh, divided by the highest value of NDVA image minus the lowest value of NDVA image again. So, we need to apply three things here. Uh, first is the NDVA image itself, and then you have to figure out the lowest and the highest values in that image. Okay, so, uh, parameters, so these three parameters you can generate the NDVA yes variable. Right? And then we are going to compute the fraction vegetation cover from this variable. Okay, it is very simple. So uh, it is nothing but the square of the NDVA yes uh, variable. Uh, so by doing that, you will be getting the fraction vegetation cover. And then you have to generate the fraction impervious cover or surface. Uh, it is again a very simple step. Uh, it is nothing but 1 minus FVC. Uh, so that uh, we are going to uh, subtract the FVC image from 1. Uh, which will give us the final output. I open my ArcMap software here. Uh, so first, I'm going to add the NDVA of my study area. Okay. So uh, this is the NDVA of my study area. Okay. I'm just going to drag it into my map canvas here. Uh, so let me give a uh, appropriate symbology for this. 
So uh, it will vary from red to green. Okay, that is from uh, low to high with relation. Okay, uh, so as you can see, my lowest value is minus 0 0.1. Uh, and the highest value is uh, somewhere around uh, 0.62 okay uh, so first we have to generate the NTBA yes factor uh, so for that we have to figure out the lowest and highest values uh, so in this case it is uh, minus 0 0.1 and uh, 0.6 respectively uh, but uh, before doing that we need to uh, we need to consider this fact we need to consider the lowest and the highest value in the NTBA image okay that exists only on the ground Okay, uh, it shouldn't be on the water body surfaces. So uh, we need to compute, uh, we need to uh, get the lowest and the highest uh, vegetation values that exist only on the ground and uh, not on the water bodies. So for that we need to mask out all the water body features from our study area uh, so that we are getting the appropriate exact values of the least and the highest vegetation that exists only on the ground. Okay, so for that we need to mask out the water body features from this study area. Uh, so let me show you how to do that. So for that, uh, you please open your R toolbox and then go to the Spatial Analyst Tools, Map Algebra, Raster Calculator. Right? So instead of Raster Calculator, uh, you can see our uh, data being added here. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is that, uh, so, you, uh, uh, so I hope you are very well familiar with this uh, range of NDVA. Okay? Uh, so it will be varying from minus 1 to plus 1, right? Uh, so, uh, anything that is between minus 1 to 0 is, uh, can be safely considered as a water body feature. And uh, if it is a barrel line, it will be somewhere around uh, 0 0.01. And as the resolution increases, it will be varying from uh, 0.1 to uh, somewhere near 1. So, uh, and by keeping that in mind, what I am going to do here is that, I am going to filter out my data so that uh, the pixels that are having a value of less than 0 uh, will be uh, considered as uh, no data values and pixels that are having a value above 0 will be considered as it is right so for that I am going to use this set null function here okay so uh, so uh, you can add that function from this box here so it is set null and inside that I am going to add me NDB image so it will be this image Okay, so it is a set null of NDV image. So this NDV image uh, should be less than zero. So uh, as I already said, I am going to assign all the pixels that are having a value of less than zero as uh, no data, right? So uh, it will be NDV image less than zero. And then uh, please go to the right side of this uh, comma here. Okay, and then you please add the NDB image again, okay. So it will be set null of NDB less than zero, comma the NDB image itself. Uh, uh, so what it will be assigning? It will be assigning the pixels that are having a value of less than zero as uh, no data, right? Okay. So, uh, so you please save this. I'm going to give the name as NDB M, okay. So that uh, M stands for mask, okay. So uh, let me save it. You can see the obvious difference in your uh, symbology now. You can see the values here. You can see the lowest value. Uh, you can see the change in the lowest value here. Okay, as compared to our uh, previous original NDV. Okay, uh, 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 so let me change the symbology of this again. So we are from red to green. So okay, you can also see uh, some place being uh, masked out in our uh, newly created image. Okay, you can see these places. These places are supposed to be water bodies. Uh, so I can see them being uh, masked out in this uh, newly created NDV image okay, as compared to our uh, previous NDV image. Okay, so now that you have masked out the water body features, we can proceed to calculate our NDV yes variable first. So let me just remove our old NDV here. Okay, so please go to your raster calculator again. So as we already discussed, uh, the formula for that is, please open a pair of parentheses first and then a slash, okay, and then a pair of parentheses again. So we are going to enter the variables inside this uh, pair of parentheses, okay. So first it will be uh, NDVA image itself, so it will be NDVA, 
minus this to value in our this to value in our NDB image. Uh, so in that case, uh, you have to go to a table of contents again, and then you have to just uh, copy and paste this value inside this uh, formula, right? So uh, just copy and paste this value. Okay, so it will be NDBA minus the lowest value in your NDBA image uh, divided by NDBA highest value. Uh, so in that case, you have to copy this value. Okay, so it is NDBA high minus NDBA low again. So, uh, so it will be uh, 0 0.62 something minus again this uh, lowest value. Okay, so, uh, uh, so you can just copy and paste the value again here. Okay, so it's fine now. So it is NDVA image minus NDVA low by NDVA high minus NDVA low again. So uh, let me save it in my folder. Uh, so uh, let me name it as NDVI yes dot to. Okay, click on OK. You can see the output being generated here now. You have to compute the fraction vegetation cover. So this fraction vegetation cover is nothing but the square of NDVA yes variable. Okay. Uh, so you have to just open the elastic calculator again and then do the process again. So it will be NDVA yes multiplied by NDVA yes again, which will give us the uh, FVC output. Uh, so let me just uh, name it as FPC itself, FPC dot right? So uh, this will be giving me the fraction vegetation cover. I think I've got it. Uh, so uh, let me just change the color of this uh, from red to green. You can see the difference between this index and our conventional NDVA index. Right, you can see the difference in them. You can see the difference there. Okay. Uh, so now we are going to generate our final product, which is the fraction impervious surface from this fraction vegetation cover. Uh, so you have to do a single step again, uh, one more step. Uh, go to the rash calculator again. Uh, so it will be 1 minus FVC dot tiff. So this will be 1 minus FVC dot tiff, which will give us the fraction impervious surface raster. So it is FIS dot two. So this will give me my final output. You can see my final output here. Uh, so let me give me let me give the color uh, ramp from uh, say blue to red, which means that uh, the places that are having a low impervious uh, be uh, be uh, colored as blue. And the places that are having a, a high degree of imposition as red. Okay, so in that case, I have to give it from blue to red. And this is our final output. So we can also cross check the relationship between the uh, FIS and the FVC uh, output rasters. Uh, so we can do that by unchecking the first one. Okay, so uh, as you can see, uh, these places said to have uh, dense vegetation. It is very obvious from their uh, high FBC values. Okay, and in the same instance, you can see a lower amount of FIS values in these places. It states that amount of vegetation greatly influences the amount of imperviousness of the surface. Uh, so, uh, in this case, since these places are having a lot of vegetation, uh, these places are having a type of soil that is more conducive for water percolation within them okay, as compared to other uh, rocky surfaces or some uh, clay soils. So the amount of vegetation uh, indirectly influences the amount of uh, imperviousness of the surface and more so uh, densely vegetated areas are said to have a, a surface that is having a, a low imperviousness okay, as compared to other uh, rocky surfaces. And you can also see some lines of blue color in these places and I suppose uh, these places are representative of the waterway channels okay, that are flowing through this study area. Uh, you can also cross check and confirm it by adding the waterways uh, in this uh, study area. So 
I have already downloaded the water base for this study area. Uh, so let me just add it uh, to the map canvas. Okay. Uh, so you can also see the difference here. Uh, if you just uh, zoom into this particular place, you can see uh, some uh, shades of uh, blue color okay, along these waterway channels. Which states that uh, these lines are having uh, water, uh, water features uh, which makes the soil more conducive for uh, groundwater percolation. Okay, because of the so uh, because of the uh, soil type, uh, these uh, water features are able to penetrate them quickly, and they are aiding them in the storage of groundwater content. Okay, so uh, in this manner, you can make some uh, in situ analysis on uh, mapping of the regions which are more prone to store the groundwater. Okay, so uh, I suppose uh, this video was of some use to you and this variable was of some use to you in your uh, research purposes. So uh, please do subscribe my channel for many more interesting contents like this. Uh, it is your support that makes me do these uh, videos. Uh, so uh, please stay tuned for further updates. Uh, so thank you so much for watching.